Hi guys, welcome back. So I've had some requests for how do you mess with QMK, how do you install it, how do you build it, and just generally going over it. So I'm going to split this into actually two parts. The, this first part is going to be how do you install QMK on your keyboard. And this will work with uh, TMK as well if you're using that firmware. And I'm sure there's probably another firmware out there I'm forgetting, but those are the ones that come off the top of my head. So this will be covering anything with an Atmega chip, like the Pro Micro, or uh, the TNC 2.0, any chip like that. And so yeah, let's get to it. So I tried my best to do a native way of flashing the firmware, but it just, I couldn't get the drivers to work. Windows was fighting me at every turn. Since I couldn't get the drivers to work, I couldn't actually uh, flash the chip through Windows natively. But luckily we can install a virtual box which allows us to run uh, run Linux inside of Windows without having to do like a full partition on your hard drive and the whole setup and all that. People have already created a uh, image of the system so it's all good to go. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads. You just go to virtualbox.org and click downloads on the left and you're here. So go ahead and download the virtual box and then you want to install the extension pack. So let me start up virtual box. So we have virtual box here. Uh, to do the extensions, you're going to go to file preferences and go down to extensions and then you click this little icon here and you want to point to where it's at. I'm just in my downloads folder. Here's this extension and then you'd say open. I've already installed this so I'm not going to do it again. And so that's all you need to know. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the VirtualBox image. Uh, it's at this GitHub address. Uh, this is actually for TMK, but TMK and QMK have the same building requirements. So this will work for you as well. There was just one little tweak that I'm going to be doing for this uh, to make it work. So you want to go here and you want to click on this link and go to download. Uh, download anyways. I've already downloaded and installed this, but I will, uh, so I'm not going to do it again. But if we go to back up the virtual box, you'll notice that I already have this Ubuntu uh, 1604 TMK. So that downloads a file called an OVA, and then you go to import appliance, and we point it to wherever you downloaded uh, your OVA file. So I downloaded downloads. We have this Ubuntu OVA file, and we just say open, and uh, it'll go ahead and import everything. It'll take like a minute or so, um, but then you're left with this guy here. Uh, so I did change one setting. If you click on right-click in settings, or if you just go here, um, I went down to the system, and I changed how much memory it had. Before, it was one gigabyte, and I just put, bumped up to four. Just uh, so it has a little bit more headroom when I'm compiling and everything. And so yeah, uh, that's, that's your uh, virtual machines all set up now. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to start. This is just boots up the virtual machine and you'll see a whole bunch of text and crap on the screen. Uh, just wait for it. And it's booted up. So the login is Ubuntu. Uh, the password is Ubuntu, and now you're into the system. One thing that you're going to have to do is install AVR Dude. So you have sudo apt uh, dash git install AVR Dude. And I've already installed this, so it's going to tell me that I already have the latest installed. What it will do is I'll prompt up with a prompt that says, do you want to install? And you just press uh, enter and I'll go ahead and install it and everything is taken care of. The next thing that you need to set up is you need to make sure that the device is passed through. Uh, your keyboard, which you'll be flashing, is passed through to uh, the Linux VM. We have this USB settings here and brings up this prompt. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this guy. And if you look here, we have uh, add a USB filter. Right now you can see, okay, what let's split is actually already uh, here. And that's what the keyboard is after it's booted up and 
uh, we need to get the keyboard in the bootloader mode. I have this beautiful little image here. And so there's a grounded reset. And what you're going to do is you want to temporarily bridge uh, these two pens together on your board. Um, and then just hold it there for a couple seconds and then let go. And as soon as you let go uh, or unbridge the connections, uh, then your device is going to be in bootloader mode for about eight seconds. It's not a very big window, so you got to be quick about it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. If we go back to VirtualBox. So I just take a piece of uh, wire and just connect the two pens on uh, either the left or the right. You're going to have to flash both at some point. Then you go here. I just reset it and I take a look. It takes a second. Then it comes up to this Arduino uh, LOC micro. So that's the device that you want and say OK. And now you are good for uh, everything set up on your VM. The last thing you want to do is you want to uh, install your firmware. To install your firmware, uh, I'm just, if somebody hands you a hex file, this is what you want to do, or if, after you build your own. Go to WinSCP, uh, say download, and then it's say installation package and system exe setup, run that guy. And this is what you're going to end up with. Uh, you can say new site and the host name is 127.0.0.1, which is localhost. And then your port number is uh, 2222. And so what you want to do is I want to log in here and it's asking me for username and password, which is the same, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. You're going to start in your home directory, home Ubuntu, that's the username. And I have this let's split uh, revision to Sean.hex. And this is just a, this is the firmware that I've already compiled. So wherever you get your firmware from, you just want to go to that directory, drag it over, and that's it. Now the file is on your virtual machine. Uh, so yes, I want to terminate the session. So the next thing, that, just to make this a little bit easier and set up for later, is you're going to want to install putty. So you go to putty.org, download here, and just say Windows 32-bit or 64-bit. I don't know who uses 32-bit anymore, but it's there. Okay, once you have it installed, you can go to this putty config uh, you see here. And it's the same as the WinSCP, and you, I already have this guy. So same address, your local host, uh, and then we start this guy and say open. And it's gonna come up with login and password. Okay, now I'm in. It's just Ubuntu, Ubuntu again. So what this gives us, it, uh, is, uh, opposed to just doing the straight in the VM, is now we have a resizable window, which is great. And I don't know if you notice, but if you go to the VM and click on it, my mouse disappears. And that's because it's controlling all the input and everything, and they have to press right control to get out of it and go back to Windows. So um, I'm just going to log out of this one, actually, because um, I don't need to be logged in anymore. And close it down. OK, so here we are. Uh, we're in PuTTY now. And so what we want to do is we want to install the firmware. I already had this uh, here. Uh, this is the command, avr do dash p at mega 32 dash p. And we have this dev tty acm zero. I'll show you how to get that in a moment. Uh, dash c avr 109, the chipset, and then dash u flash uh, colon w colon, and then the name of your firmware, which in my case is the let's split revision two. Uh, this is the command that you're going to run the flasher device. Do the reset thing again to get your guy in the bootloader mode, reset uh, by bridging the reset and ground pens. After you release, wait one second, press enter, and it might not work right away, so try it again. And now it's going to say, okay, look, it's writing to your device. And then it's reading it back. And it may fail on reading it back, and that's okay. Uh, just make sure it's all written to. And so, yep, everything is done. And so now your device is flashed. But I left off the part where it's like, okay, where did this uh, dev TTY ACM zero show up from? So the easiest way I know to do this is if you unplug your USB device, your keyboard in this case, and if you plug it back in, give it a second, give it about 10 seconds to boot up. And you want to type in this thing called D message, which is D-M-E-S-G, and you press enter. The last 
thing is going to be like, okay, here's your USB device. I get this TTY ACM0. You'll notice like right before it, it's a like product Arduino Micro and all that. And so you have this TTY ACM0. That's where I get that from. Uh, I just added the slash dev uh, in front of it because that's where Linux stores all of its device links or whatever you want to call them. And so that's how I got that. So yours might be like dev, TTY, USB 0 or... But yep, that's how you flash your firmware. So that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. And I'll be making another video shortly about how do you actually build the firmware from scratch and it'll be building off of this VM that we made here. As always, thanks for watching and if you enjoy this content, please hit that subscribe button. And I'm always checking my comments. This video was actually made because people left in the comments, I want to see how to install QMK. I want to know everything about QMK. So I'm starting making these videos. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, then please leave them below and I will get to you. All right. Till next time.